Hello, everybody, and welcome to Terry Talks. I am your host, Terry McKnight. I am looking for new authors. I am looking for new psalmists. You may have a new song out. You may have a new hit. You want to sit down and talk about it, or you may want to shoot a commercial and have your commercial run through Terry Talks. If that is you, guess what? Contact your girl, 504-343-8896, or hit me up on my email, millionaireblonde1 at gmail.com. Get booked with Terry Talks. Welcome to Terry Talks. This is your host, Terry McKnight. I am so excited to be here with you guys this week. It's another amazing moment with your girl, Miss T. Lynn McKnight, Miss Millionaire Blonde One. I am ready, you guys. I am so, so happy to have all of you here with me, but this is a great moment tonight. This is an unusual show tonight. I have the one and only Mr. Gleason Roussel. He's a local resident here in St. John Parish. He's an entrepreneur. He has been in business for years, providing um, services to the community. And he's also a positive and major role model in this community. He's been leading people to Christ for years now. And I'm super excited to have you on the show. How are you doing today, Mr. Roussel? I'm honored to be here. All right, awesome, awesome. So we're gonna dive straight into this because I know you're like, girl, what do you want to know? And I got to get the goods tonight to share with you guys. So how did you get started along with Resurrection Custom? Well, I've been doing body work since I was like 14, 15 in school. And I got a little part-time job and took an interest in it. And you wouldn't believe it, 45 years later, scaled it. Wow. And I know I've had uh, used your own business, but how did you decide that you wanted to have your own business? Well, see, you got to do a lot of uh, background and research. Everybody figured they can do something, so now they're ready to go full-blown business. But you got to know all of the business part. You got to know the law part. You got to you got to know so much other stuff. Just because you can do something, you got to know how to manage it, produce it, put it out there on the market, and you got to be uh, educated in that field. Okay, so if there were uh, some young people that were interested. Because I remember back in the day, um, you had several different events where you were teaching young folks how to put air in tires, how to change oil and stuff like that. So if somebody right now, what would be a growing for them if they were interested in doing custom body work? How would they get started? Well, I've had a, I've had a big apprentice. I, I take kids from uh, high school. I take inmates from the prison. Okay. A lot of guys got good trades and, you know, we end up in a bad space, but uh, prison can be one of the greatest places where you can uh, program your life, your future, and your career. Because I know some people, when they do get caught up in different situations, they feel like once they've gotten in that bad, that dark place, or they've gone to prison or something, they feel like it's over. Do you feel like it's over, or do you feel like there is something that can shock them back and be able to handle things in real society. Well, it's a position where you be in, you can either be bitter or you can make it better. Okay. And it's just a, it's a time out. When you come to a, a, a crisis in your life where you need to be correct. Okay. And, and that's why they call it a correctional institution. Mm -hmm. It's to correct the bad problem you got and, and get you back on the right track to be a real productive nigga. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, so many people um, want to have that millionaire status, but I know you for yourself, that's something that you have to not just dive into. This is something that's gradually, progressively made over time. So um, with the body work and stuff like that, is that something that you just deal with local or are you like on a big scale with it? I know you've been doing it for how many years now? It's been uh, maybe 45 years. 
I did it since I was 14. Yeah. But then my shop went that now. I've been there for 18 years. 18 years. And it's from being groomed, from working at other shops over the years. You know, you, you see, you've been there 10 years here, 10 years there. You watch the, the owner get rich. Right. You know, but he, uh, for me, I'm still down at the bottom of the boat. You know? and, uh, I don't see a shared away. Yeah. We need and we need to network and help each other, build each other up. So I don't want to dismiss you. Say if I got a good guy that, that's uh, a real good body man and a good man, I'm not going to miss you and underpin and all of that. I'm going to reward him more and more to make him great, bring his gift out more. And you know, that's one thing that I realized that we don't do enough of encouraging each other and pushing each other. And I think that sometimes that's what's missing. But I know that when you put that encouragement in, it grooms people for another level in entrepreneurship. Because I'm an entrepreneur myself, and I know a lot of times I see um, different ones doing different uh, types of entrepreneur things. And just that one little word to get them back on track and uh, reignite them for another level. So another thing I wanted to kind of talk to you about, this is really what I wanted to make known to everybody. Um, you started a ministry. Grooming men, I don't know if you want to say grooming men, but getting men back on track. And you told me that that's that grown to like 50 men that you ministered to on Saturday today. Saturday is not. We got the new one on the I started it from when I first came home. I uh, got a group on Friday night. I knew if I could take, I knew when men fall short on Friday. That's when the, the drug dealers come, the seduction. No, you just got paid. And uh, I started a ministry on Friday night. I would cook and uh, teach the word of God and, and, and encourage brothers and sisters too. Mm -hmm. So if, you can, if I can keep them Friday night, I know they got their paycheck. Mm -hmm. I know that I got them, I done fed them, I, I feed, them, feed them physically, I feed their soul, and I can reprogram their mind. We can, we can spend thought wrong. The streets will take you and you've been taught, you know, back in the day, mom and dad, the old way was great. And you got out of line, they punished you. They told you that this wasn't good for you, this wasn't good, but now we done got so loose. Everybody going to change the law. And nothing right, you know, everything is legal. So oh, all the things are legal and right. We need some kind of guideline, some kind of law to keep us disciplined, to keep us molded and shape us to be a great man. Yeah. And having a godly quality and godly important is definitely the way to go. That's definitely what we all need. You know, the guidance, the word of God, you know, instructing us and leading us in our lives. So um, with the guys that come to you now, um, what would you say, like, um, how have you seen them change their lives? What's altered? Like, what's different? Well, see, you see, when you get a washing machine, it breaks, you got a man. Mm -hmm. Teach you how to fix it back. You know, if something breaks on it, it show you how to fix it. You get a car, automobile, you got a manual coming with it. Mm -hmm. Now, if something breaks on us, we need to go back to the, the author who created us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah go back and learn the instructions to fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned through, through the years that uh, men they need to be taught how to be a man. See, a, a, a woman can't really teach a man to be a man. And a man can't teach a woman to be a man. It, it has, you got a divine balance. And that's where we all got off track. You know, like when I was young, I had my cousins and all of them, they gonna teach me about the world. Never let a woman go. You love her. You gotta be hard. You gotta be this. And that's when you came in with the camp and all of this perverted, real nice, good, wholesome people. I mean, they even got so man, they went into church and started to go to this, you know? Pimps in church. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the gospel singers, look at all the great gospel singers. Everybody wanna use somebody's talent. They're going to church. I ain't got to <laughs> and see and they, they convert the things that, that that are made good things then we take and put a twist on it and now we can make sure we do and now we are this is why predominantly you started the ministry that you have to divert 
away from those things. And you know, if you have to grow this ministry for 50, that means that there's men out there that want something different, that want to do something different, that want to see something different. And then, you know, our lifestyles have to line up to be able to be a demonstration so that when our lifestyles are a demonstration, we're now, we don't just have to say, hey, look, come go. Hey, look, do this. When they see that Greece and Russell lifestyle, has changed or his lifestyle has shifted or his finances has grown and his heart is uh, uh, for the people, people gravitate to that. So they want to know what is the source and where did that come from and how did you get there? And so I know a lot of them are gravitating to you because of that, because I know it's been years that I know of that you've always been, you know, guiding and teaching young brothers as well as the mature men in Christ, you know, leading them the right way. So where exactly is it located for those who may be interested in joining or coming to some of the uh, ministering services that you guys have? Because I know all of us here, we know where New Wine is, but you might want to give a little snippet as to where it's located. And... Yeah, it's, it's a great uh, Pastor Neil to know. He's mm -hmm. one of the good backbones of St. John. He is. Using the church, his facilities. I mean, we got an awesome uh, shopping center facility. We use it for recreational. We got a big gym. We uh, he hosts some of the, the biggest funeral that the police officers get built. Their funeral will come to new one. And uh, our facilities for men. We try to catch young men in trouble, whatever. Pastor Neil got him at a house where uh, he get guys off drugs. We rehab guys coming out of prison. He don't shun them away and tell them this, that, that. He'll come to me and say, please, I got a guy getting out of here. He's going to need a job. Man, I can't wait to pull my hand out and say, yeah, come on, I'll get him. Yeah. And that, that's what we need. Back in the days, we were kind of a neighbor, a husband got laid off the job. Everybody in the community. Man, we'll cook food for the family. We'll make groceries and bring that family. We'll, Dig in our closet and get clothes too small and bring to a bit. I mean, no, you know, you're doing bad right now. But that's what we all for. We help one another. A village. A village. A village. A village. And that's, yeah. that's where we felt that our love got so full. You know? we, we started to hate one another. Yeah. You know, they was always talking about the clan. We came back from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. You know, we always knew how the clan was bad. Huh? But today, man, we we turned out to be the black man. Man, it really hurted me when I was seeing that. Uh, I had God you know, I to, to reprogram ourselves. Well, we can love one another. Not destroy one another. Let's, let's try to help build. This brother ain't got this. Five of us get together and go into his life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now we all got it. Show the love and show the, show the loyalty that God uh, so awesome to show stuff. And that, that's what we need. We need to go back to business. Yeah. Grandma held the family together by being in our first mm -hmm. Anything happens, man, you let me go to grandma and grandma say, well, I know how to fix it. Yeah. You let me get on my knees and pray and call on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that changes everything. So if you could, if you could give a strong word of encouragement to a young gentleman that may be watching the show, or even to a guy, or uh, older man that may be watching the show, what would be your encouraging word to them? Like, what would you tell them? Man, never give up. As long as you got breath in your body, you can change your situation. We can be feeling bad today. We can be caught up. Man, sin, sin will grab you and take a hold of you. My brother's on drugs. Man, you back now you 99% drugs and 1% man. man, I need you to get that back turned the other way. I need you to be 99% a man and this 1% of fuck. But uh we got to go back and, and be corrected and let, let everybody know we can be forgiven. We all fall down. Right. But it's how you get up. Yeah. Don't let the same one keep pushing you up to push you right back into the dirt. Right. And so you said that's predominantly men that go. And what time do y'all meet? We meet at 8.30 every Saturday morning at uh, New Wine Christian Fellowship. 
and uh, I don't know, the third or the last one, we have the big men's brother. And his brothers from other churches, other communities, from New Orleans, Metairie, uh, Bashbury, guys from, from everywhere, because they're, they're hearing about it. And they're bringing these songs, and uh, we're trying to teach and, and mold to be some mighty men of God. Oh, yeah. And that's the whole thing, you know, even with this show, Terry Talk. You know, I want to put light on the positive situation. You know, I want to put light on the fact for men who may be in need, men may uh, be looking for uh, love, men who may be looking for a kind word, men who may be looking for encouragement, because men don't always ask, hey, look, I, I, I just need a word, you know? Us women, we're very talkative. Girl, pray for me. I need a word, you know, lift me up. Let's lift one another up. But I know sometimes men kind of shy away from that. They kind of hesitate. That's why I wanted to shed light on the fact that y'all do have a strong mentoring men's group, you know, locally right here in St. John Parish being held every Saturday morning around 9.30, 8.30 um, on the direction of Gleason Roussel and uh, Pastor Neil Bernard. You know, the facility is open to everyone. There's men coming, he said, from various locations. So I just want y'all to be aware of that. So that if you're hurting, if you're going through something, there is help, there is a place, there is a location, there is somewhere where you can be to be able to, as they say, not put a band-aid on it, but to be healed, but to be delivered, but to be have recompense. You know, it is available right here in St. John Parish. And you know, Lisa, I am so excited that you took the time to come on the show to be able to, you know, shed some light on various situations, you know, and also if you guys are in the St. John Paris area and y'all need your car uh, beautified, Gleason Roussel is the person, it's Resurrection Customs. He's a great entrepreneur for a very long time and he's also a great man of God. Okay, so whatever it is that y'all need, contact Gleason Roussel. You know, I just, is there anything else you would like to say? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, a shout out to our uh, men's instructor, this is the group of us, and, uh, Joe Jackson and Don Coase, out of the third, Don Coase, Joe Jackson out of the class. They all are uh, drug instructors, business, regular working guys, mm -hmm. and they come back, but they love the love. Amen. And God will give you that love, the love, the lovely. You know, some people don't love themselves. That don't mean I'm not gonna love you. And that's what they need to be. They need to be shown the love of God. Because man, if medicine, all of this stuff here don't heal you. It's love. Love will make you get up from out of that mud, dirt. If someone would just love you back in, man, you can become a great person. Woo! Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. See you do. Yeah. But I'm honored that uh see you took time out. And uh, let me come and share with you because I, I love the things you're doing, you know, your entrepreneur. And uh, you was right there with us when me and Norm uh, did our little uh, young youth. Oh, yeah. Thing. My son, Ty, he was right there with y'all. No, but you were yeah. really good instructor for him and what you could do, what you could do to help him, you know. Because you, you got your son, you wanted to raise, and, and you know, you, you want some help from the brothers to help. Right. And that, that one was so beautiful that you asked for that. Right. And we was right there, and you got down in the dirt and got right with us. And uh, I never forget that. See, that, that, that's the seed you planted that I tell other women about, you know. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out and asking me to come and speak with you because you, you're a great impact to our community, a great example for young women to speak to. Yes, uh, and, uh, we love you. We love you. Yeah. All right, y'all heard it right here first. We've had a great time talking with. Uh, Mr. Gleason Roussel, I am your host, Terry McKnight. It's been absolutely amazing. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon with Terry Talk. Yes, so you can find us at the Royal Bean Coffee Corner, which is at 512 West Bank Expressway, Gretna, Louisiana, 70053. It is located inside of Mustache Barbershop. 
you can also visit our website, www.theroyalbean.com. You can find us on social media. Our Instagram is the Royal Bean 504 and our Facebook is the Royal Bean NOLA. All right. Thank you so much, Miss April. It has been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, I am your host, Terry McKnight. Thank you all for tuning in to Terry Talks. All right. See ya. and illuminate your senses with compelling aromas. Purchase your candle today or for a special loved one or if you're interested in hosting a fundraiser for your church, school, or business, contact us today. And be sure to follow us on Facebook Live at Unique Wax.